maailmas on miljoneid kristlasi, keda usutõttu tagakiusatakse. Nende kodumaal on evangeeliumi kuulutamine väga ohtlik. Märtrite hääl on abiks tagakiusatu üle, et nad võiksid oma usku välja elada ja viia häid sõnumeid edasi neile, kes seda veel kuulnud pole. Tere tulemast vaatama kõigile saadet Märtrite hääl oma Eesti saade. Ja on eesõikus jälle oma tööhte toredat külalist. Meil siin stuudios on Valgas, teisest Eesti otsast Reet Kästik, Valga lootused ja koguduse pastor. Ja olnud ka ettevõtt ja päris pikalt mõned küsimused Reedale. Kas lühidalt tutvustaksid ennast ja kuidas oled usule tulnud? Jah. Minu olen siis hea Reed Kästik ja Valgast ja minu usule tulek oli selline eriline, aga ma arvan, et igal ühel on ta eriline, sest Jumal kutsub meid igat ühte täiesti erilisel kombel ja minul oli see 30 aastat tagasi, 1993, siis kui oli Eesti vabarik, oli sündinud. Ja oma raha oli tekinud ja minu abikaase hakkas käima Venemaal, kus oli kõik odavam kaupa toomas ja Eestisse müümas. Ja siis hakkasin mina ka kaasus käima mingi aeg ja meie kätte sattus siis vale raha. See oli siis viis kahekümne dollarilist vale raha. Ja mina nagu oma naivsusest ma nägin, et seda vale raha ka nagu müüdi, see raha vahetus oli nagu käest kätte kuskil turu peal. Ja Petseris siis mina pakkusin seda seda sada dollarit, et vahetada seda siis Vene raha vastu ja ütlesin, et see on vale, et ma ei taha nii palju, et 50% taha näinud oma naivsuses. Ja too mees ütles, et anna niisama siia või ma kutsun Miilitsa. Ja me läksime sealt ära ja 15 minuti pärast tuligi Miilis ja võttis meid kinni. Mina muidugi võtsin kõik selle nagu enda peale, et mina üksi teadsin, et noh, mis nad mul ikka teevad selle eest. Aga nemad arvasid, et nüüd on nad leidnud midagi sellist sealt Eesti maalt, kus vale raha liigub ja nad mõssid mulle poolteist aastat vangla karistust. Selle aeg sees Leningradis siis zoonis, 40 kilometrit oli Leningradist. Aga sama aeg sealt ka mul oli see väga, väga raske aeg, et abikaasa, kes tahtis mind tulla ka vaatama, kuidagi moodi suuri ära Eesti vene piiri peal ja mina nagu seda ei teadnud, aga ma hakkasin vanglas nägema teda kogu aeg une, seda oli hästi kuri, hästi kuri mu peale ja siis seal soovitati, et mine sinna kiriku tuppa ja lase mehe mälestuseks küünal süüdatat, kuna sa teda nagu matta ei saanud, matusele minna ei saanud ja nii ma läksin sinna ja ka see kirikõpetaja ütles mulle, et tema ei ole õigusu kirikust, tema on luteri kirikust ja ütles, et aga ma võin sinu eest palvetada. Mina siis mõtlesin, et noh, et mis siis ikka, et noh, palveta, mulle ei olnud mingisugust aru saamist usustega jumalast, mingisuguseid teadmisi ei olnud. Ja siis te kohe küsis minu käest, et kas sa Jumala lapseks ei taha saada. Ma ise mõtlesin, et noh, et ma olen kaugel siin ja lapsed on mul kaugel ja ah, et ma võin ju Jumala laps ka olla, et ma ei teadnud, mis see tähendab. Ja siis ma palvetasin tema järgi vene keeles selle patuse palve, et armas Jumala anna mulle andeks mu patud tulemus südames elama, et Jeesus Kristus suri ka minu eest ristil. Ma võtan selle kõik vastu. Ja umbes selline see palve oli ja Siis ta ütles, et nüüd sa pead seda tõsiselt võtma. Isegi peale seda palve, et muidugi ma ei saanud aru, mida ma pean tõsiselt võtma. Aga peale seda minu elu hakkas muutuma, siis täkki ma tundsin, et keegi armastab mind. Ja ma ei saanud sellest aru, et mis minuga toimub, kõik ajab nutma ja tahan head teha ja kõik on nii õrn selline olemine, selline armastav sükkene, no täiesti teissugune olin. Ja siis ma mõtlesin, et ma lähen sinna kirikutuppa ja uurin nüüd selle kirikuõpete käest, et mis ikka toimub minuga. Sest tegelikult ma venelastega või nagu venekeelt vähe rääkisin ja ma ei rääkinud nendega ja mul ei olnud kellegi ka nagu rääkidagi. 
Ja siis ma ikka käisin seal, aga, aga ma ei kunagi ei näinud enam seda kirikupetat. Aga seal olid teised evangelistid, kes käisid vanglas sel ajal ja elusõna tüdrukud. Nemad rääkisid, et Jumal vastab palvetele ja mina mõtlesin, et küll on eriline. Et mina koputan, et ma tahan ka seda ja saan siis või niisuguses oma naivsuses. Ja, ja va- hakkasin palvetama kodu pärast ja laaste pärast ja, ja, ja nägin, et Jumal reaalselt vastas palvetele. Ja niimoodi mu see usu teie algas ja, ja ma hakkasin kasvama seal usus, siis ma sain veel eesti keelse piibli ja lõpuks olid selle kirikutua võtmed minu käes ja, ja ma juba <köhem> olin seal aktiivne ja, ja muutusin rõõmsaks. Kui ma enne ma olin kurb ja õnnetu, siis peale seda, kui ma sain Jumala lapseks ikkagi, tuli rõõm minu sisse, et ma võisin seal vanglas ka olla rõõmus. Ja kui ma välja tulin, siis ma mõtlesin, ma räägin kõigile, kui hea on Jumalaga koos elada. Et see on nii lihtne, et võta Jeesus vastu oma südamesse. Aga ma nii imestasin, et kuidas maailmas inimesed ei taha vastu võtta. No, nagu ei, see oli nii raske. Aga no nii seda tööd ma olen teinud siin 30 aastat ja ikka rääkinud ja on ka inimesed tulnud usule. 2014 ma sattusin, sattusin Ukrainasse, siis kui oli seal Maidaan just olnud ja, ja koguduses ja kogudustes oli suur ärkamine ja imed toimusid seal ja, ja mul oli suur igatsus, et meil oleks ka selline kogudus. Ja, ja tulin tagasi ja siis kolm kuud valgas alustasime kodugruppiga. Kolme kuu pärast oli meid juba 30 inimest vist. ja siis me 2015 moodustasime koguduse alguses. Me olime nagu Ukrainaga ühenduses, aga pärast poole me jäime ise seisvaks. Et sellise lugu. Nii et pooldeist aastat Venema vanglas ja, ja. said päästetud seal. Ja. Väga huvitav. Sa oled märtrite hääl Eesti ühingu juhatuses ka kaasas ja me ühispalvetes. Miks sa liitusid märtrite häälega? No see alguses sai ja see kevad, kui sina ei selistasid, et Soomest tuleb märtrite hääle tegev juht Hanno Lahtinen. Eestis see, et ta tahaks kuskil koguduses rääkida ja, ja ma olin kohe valmis, ma ütlesin, tulge meile. Ja, ja siis te tulite ja, ja mind väga puudutas see kõik, mis, mis see Hannu rääkis ja, ja, ja kõik see hakkas mind väga puudutama. Eriti, mis mulle jäi nagu meeld, oli see, see lugu sealt erit reast, kus oli siis see, Kospel laulja, kes oli evankeeliumi kuulutaja ja kuulutas ja laulis ja, ja, ja ta pandi vangi ja, ja konteiner vanglasse siis. Ja, mm-hmm. et, äh, laeva konteiner, seal oli ta tava vangidega koos on ja kui söösel oli siis külm ja päeval palav ja kus praktiliselt see söök oli ka olematu. Aga, aga mis ta ütles? Ta ütles seda, et... et äh, Vaatamata kogu sellele tagakiusule ja piinamistele ja vanglatele, et ma ei kaotanud oma usku selle pärast, et ma olin tagakiusuks valmistunud. valmistunud. Ja see pani mind ka väga mõtlema, et praegu on ju ka meil sellised ajad, mis me näeme maailmas toimub, et, et me ei oleksime ka valmistunud. Et kui tulevad rasked ajad on ju. Ja mulle sõna ütleb, et me ei oleme maailma valgus, et kui... Kui meie ei ole valgus ja kui tulevad rasked ajat, et kelle poole siis need ütleme, et maailma inimesed pöörduvad on ju. Et ma mõtlen, et me kristlased peaksime olema valmis. Mm-hmm. Valmistunud igasuguseks raskeks ajaks. Ja ma arvan, et kõige rohkem, mis on meil vajalik, et me peame teadma, kes me oleme Kristuses. Ja mis on need meie võimalused ja mis on meie ressursid ja, ja mis Jumal on meile kõik pannud ja annud on ju, et me saaksime hakkama ka igas olukorras. Suur tänu, Reet. Ja sa mainisid ka Helen Perhanet, kellest on tulemas raamat ka eesti keeles üsna varsti, kui Jumal lubab, kes on väga hirmselt tagakiusuga kannatanud Eritrea konteiner vanglas. Ja nüüd näitamegi teile videointervjuud tehtud Abeba Russomiga, kes on Eestile päris tuntud nimi, ta on paljudes kogudustes käinud apostelikus teenistuses. Tema on ka pärit Eritreast ja uurisin tema käest tema kogemuste ja Eritrea olukorra kohta.
Uh, hello, uh, dear Abe Barusso. Uh, uh, I'm really glad uh, to have you with us uh, via interview. Uh, I tried to reach you here already here in Estonia, <laughs> but uh, Lord has uh, have a, had other plans. So um, glad to make this interview. Um, can you tell shortly about uh, your your life, uh, your testimony, how you came to Christ, and uh, have you personally also or your re relatives experienced persecution uh, because of your faith? Thank you, dear Jana, and thank you for this privilege for TV7 in Estonia. Uh, I'm also glad uh, to come today to be interviewed by you. Yes, uh, my name is Abe Barusom. I'm originally from Eritrea, which is a very uh, little country in Northeast Africa, in the Horn of Africa, besides the Red Sea. I was born in the main city of Eritrea, Asmara, and uh, I have been grown up with a very religious family. My father was a, an evangelist, and uh, I was introduced to Jesus Christ when I was very small. I remember three years old, I started to say Jesus. I was saved, uh, received Jesus Christ as my personal savior when I was 17 years old. And uh, yes, of course, my life has been saturated by the life of Jesus Christ. And uh, as we all know, every day we are the student of him. So we cannot say we know so much, <laughs> but I'm so happy to have the life of Jesus Christ in me. As you asked me if I have experienced an, um, persecution in my country, uh, in the time I, I was grown up, we were under terrible uh, barbaric uh, war. So um, my soul, I have been always persecuted. But as a Christian, um, yes, uh, I have experienced that kind of persecution because uh, the born-again people in Eritrea uh, has been even by, by the <laughs> publicated but I was not being in prison because I am living in Sweden. Uh, but I, I know, I feel about that. I was about to be in, in, um, in the prison in 19, uh, 2018. I, was, I went there um, to bury my mother. So I felt terrible that I have been spurned. And uh, at the end of the day, I knew my life was in danger. And I escaped from the country. Mm -hmm. That can I say shortly. Yeah, uh, we know uh, already some of us uh, in Estonia know through the Voice of Martyrs organization that uh, Eritrea is one uh, of uh, countries in the world uh, what is number one mm. uh, because of persecution of Christians. Number one, yes. they are sharing uh, number one place uh, in the world of persecution of Christians with uh, North Korea, what is also really, really barbaric uh, country against Christians. So um, why Eritrea is number one uh, country uh, of persecution of Christians? Uh, in what condition uh, Christians has to live uh, or, or evangelists or pastors have to live now in Eritrea and uh, and I know also that you have one friend of yours who uh, kidnapped uh, by uh, police of Eritrea uh, when she was 17 years old only and uh, she had to spend uh, in really bad conditions in Eritrean jail uh, 20 years of her life, so uh, she was too scared to participate today with us in this interview. But can you tell also from her experience and uh, from the side of Eritrean Christians uh, in what uh, circumstances we, we are living there? When I say it's spiritually, our country has been persecuted uh, since it was existed, parallel to uh, Israel. Uh, we don't know. It is not discovered. It is not, uh, I mean, we didn't have time to study it, but uh, we have a common uh, many sides with Jewish people. Our uh, uh, language is very mixed. We are Semitic. 
our culture, our character, and everything, it is almost the same. And uh, I start to study about that, and that is one of the places uh, God has uh, given to the Jewish people to inherit our country, but they did not. Anyway, um, since Israel was persecuted, our country was persecuted, I could see we are called by God. The country is called by God. And as we see today, what happens in Israel and the Jewish people, it is not the physical, uh, I mean, struggle or war. It is the demonic, satanic power since um, uh, Genesis uh, chapter 3.15. There was enmity between the devil and the people of God. And the devil has been changing different kind of character and uh, time and uh, uh, colors, but the aim is to annihilate, to kill uh, the people of God so that the kingdom of God will not be preached or uh, expanded. So uh, our country has been ruled by many colonialists and we have been limited to our rights. And uh, But since 1991, when our country was uh, I mean, liberated at the same time with your country, uh, we hoped that we have uh, now the chance to be uh, the people of Eritrea, our identity, our right and everything. We had a great uh, expectation. But sorry to say so, uh, the one who is ruling he is uh, the worst dictator in the world. We can see it. And uh, he has been treating our people in the very worst way of uh, of torture, barbarism, uh, this uh, prison and all. Uh, it's for the whole people. Uh, in our country, he destroyed it. It is a dark I mean, country now. But especially, he was about, you know, the churches. In 2002, he closed all the evangelical churches, all the Pentecostal uh, I mean, movements. In 2004, he started to um, torture the Christians and all our leaders, most prominent leaders, he started to put them in prison without any law, without any standard in the prison. And we have my own pastors whom I have worked with them, doctors, uh, pastors and uh, apostles, grounders of churches, uh, since 2004, they are in the dungeon and no one is visiting them. The life they live, it is, I don't know, some of them, they died we here. And um, it is just to break, to break their spirit so that uh, the things of God will not continue. And this man is really used by the devil, we can uh, say. And uh, as you said, uh, my friend, she is much younger than me. She was a bit uh, correct that she was 16. And uh, she was just, I mean, uh, f having fellowship and with so many people, uh, they have been detained in the church. And she was 16 years in the terrible situation in different prisons, as she told me. Yes, there was uh, um, starvation, they give them one bread or two bread a day with just a little water, and they are allowed to go and have open air and the starvation and uh, what you call this um, thirsty and without no proper clothes, no bed, nothing. They were putting them in a container. So she told me that was not the main problem for us, she said. But the weather was very hot, about 40 degrees centigrade, and closed in a container without any air. Mm. And uh, it, is, it is terrible when she mentioned it. And um, for four years, around four years, she has been there. And she existed by her very um, uh, strong faith. That she said sometimes the death was upon me. I feel like, you know, I'm passing away. But she said, Jesus, if you are alive, 
I have to live by your life. And she uh, could, I mean, leave that. And then they took her to another prison and uh, so on. I mean, uh, the best uh, um, fruitful time of her life and others, youngsters like her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They just, um, I mean, they, they spend it for nothing yeah. under torture and all. It's incredible that uh, the world doesn't know anything about uh, these such cases and the situation about the nation. Uh, so that's why the Voice of Martyrs organization is uh, existing. Uh, is one main reason to uh, to give those news uh, what world needs to know uh, that we have uh, people living in this kind of conditions. And uh, uh, what uh, what possibilities uh, Eritrea has to uh, evangelize this nation, or uh, are all the churches underground? Yes, uh, you know it is a uh, nature and character of persecution. Uh, the government tried its best that uh, they are not going to exist. And now it's not allowed more than three or four people to gather uh, together. And if they found them three, four, uh, five people, and then they will put them in the prison. Uh, but despite of that, underground church, the more they narrowed them, the more they limited them, then the face is growing. And underground, under this persecution, so many has testified that uh, they sacrificed already their life for Jesus. If they die or alive, they don't care. Still, the gospel and the salvation, it is going on in a strong way underground. Now, when the Voice of Martyrs is also founded in Estonia, so uh, what can you say, what uh, Estonian Christians can do uh, for Eritrea uh, how we can support this uh, really uh, closed country? Um, how we can? What what are the prayer requests? Main prayer requests and how we can support? You know, um, it is very good because uh, Christians means we are one. We are the body of Christ. But uh, as far as I am concerned, of course, uh, in uh, states like Europe, Scandinavia, and uh, the Balkan city, maybe you don't have the torture, the, I mean, hell. Other people like uh, in my country, in North Korea and in China are going through. So the people are in need both in prayer, but if you say to one who is hungry and thirsty and naked and just tell him, God bless you, it doesn't help. So I will uh, convey my message to Estonians. I love Estonian people. I have been traveling all over in Estonia uh, the last 10 years. And uh, I encourage you, pray and just stretch your hand, help the people. I am, I can be the channel uh, to connect you how we will do or how we do to help these people. We don't send money, but we have to send it in different ways so that it will reach them and help them and uh, at least survive them. So please pray for the kingdom of God to spread also. Those who are um, detained, they will be so strong. They will keep their morale. And they will survive until God is going to do something. So they will not be broken because there is a pastor that has been uh, freed, but he is totally out of fuse now. He, he, he cannot do anything. And those people whom they send them, uh, they set them free, you know, uh, they have a lot of problem for accommodation. They have been away from the country, from the family, uh, 20, 10 years and the people that they don't know, and they don't have any economy to stay. And at the same time, the re- regime or the government is also sending some spies, you know. If they start this and that, just tell us. Some of them, they are again in, in the government, but they need a lot of help for accommodation, for food, both the families of those prisoners and those who are free and 
uh, over uh, all the Christians in, in, in that country. So thank you if you just pray and then do what God is telling you to do to help them. Yeah. Uh, we have opportunity uh, uh, from our nation also donate uh, for Eritrea. So we have a bank account for this and uh, I will tell, tell in Estonia also that you can donate for Eritrea. And this uh, help will, will go through Finnish uh, Voice of Matters uh, directly in uh, very needed places. So uh, also to support uh, some families to run away uh, from this country and to support them. So, uh, uh, but can we pray uh, shortly for Eritrea? Can you pray uh, with, uh, with Estonian Christians now uh, for mm. Eritrea? Okay, let's pray. Father God, we thank you and we praise your mighty name. You are all present God, all knowing God, almighty God. Thank you for your presence, but you need a channel, Father. Your church, your bride is your outstretched hand. I think and I bless you in this uh, terrible time as we see it today, as we experience today, speak to every believing Christian father that in the first hand we have to prepare for your second coming father. And then to speed the, 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 your second coming by just, I mean, expanding the gospel wherever we are and at the same time, help our people all over in the world, Father, who are in terrible persecution, in hunger, in thirst, and in every kind of torture of the devil. So I ask you, Father God, unite us all over the world. Be our head, anoint us, open our eyes to see in the spirit and ears to hear in the spirit and to obey you, Father. Thank you for the privilege that you have given to us. And at this uh, very difficult moment also, we remember the Jewish people, Father, and even the Palestinians, let your kingdom come and your will be done. In Jesus' name I ask you, amen. Jesus, amen. amen. Thank you very much, Abeba Rusom, and uh, you often visit also Estonian churches, so big warm welcome to you, and uh, hope to uh, see you again soon, and God bless you. Th thank you, uh, dear uh, Jana, and thank you, TV7 in Estonia. God bless you. Suur tänu meie ka kaasas olemast ja veel tutvustan teile Eesti esimest märtvite hääl uudiskirja. Aga kas siin on juttu Eritrea tagakiusust ja Helen Perhane tunnistusest? Ja, ja kellel veel ei ole, siis oleviste kirikus suuremates kogudustes peaks olemas olema. Lokose poodi viin ka neid, aga minu käes saab tellida ka elektroonses vormis uudiskirja pdf-ina saan saata. Võite kirjutada mulle jaanaeskor.gmail.com Võite Facebooki teel ühendust võtta, kui on soovi olla kaasas märtrite hääl tööga, liituda liikmeks meie ühingule või vabatahtlikuna panustada, siis väga on vaja abiliste vabatahtliku abi. Ja olge kaasas palves nende maade eest, sest palves on suur jõud ja, ja ka finantsiliselt toetamas kontonumbrit näete, saate panna Eritrea selgitusse, kui soovite seda maad toetada. Õnnistusi teile kõigile!